Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. I'm actually going to talk a little bit about sedation and pain management, which means that I get to talk about my favorite substance on the face of the earth, which is ketamine. ASEPS recently endorsed the use of ketamine for pain management, both as a standalone agent and in conjunction with other agents. It works well, comparable to opioids, IV at a dose of 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams per kilo. And since we all know sometimes people who can't take opioids don't have great veins, it works nasally as well at a dose of one milligram per kilo. It's great for patients that are expected to have a really high pain management needs. It's also good for people who, for whatever reason, you don't want to give opioids to. And it seems to work well even in things like renal colic. Focusing on the children for a second, which I apparently don't have a slide for, there was a recent study that came out this year looking at the use of ketamine for pain management intranasally at a dose of 1.5 milligrams per kilo for fractures, and it worked as well as fentanyl. And at this point, instead of talking anymore, I'd like to introduce a video, and I would like to welcome you all to Hogwarts Hospital. Call your name. Please step forward. You will be sorted into your residencies. Never gluten free. Okay, stay calm. Mental, that one. Okay, let's take a look at your objective structured clinical exam. Your OSCE. I think Joni broke his arm. Can you fix it? Um... Oh! Uh, stickers! Do you want a sticker? Um... Look! You're so sweet. He really likes you. But what are we gonna do about the arm? Uh... Fruit snacks! Pediatrics! Victor Thumb. I think Junior broke his arm. Can you fix it? Hmm. How does that make you feel, Junior? Bad. Mm. Why? Because it hurts. Oh, because it hurts. Hmm. Psychiatry! Draco Dunbarcoy. That needs to be reduced. Have they ordered pin meds yet? Well, never mind. We'll just do it here. <laughs> Orthopedics! Hermione Ranger. I think Junior broke his arm. Can you fix it? Okay, let's get some pain medicine into Junior and then I'll take a look. Do you know how much he weighs? Ugh, they just told me and I totally forgot. I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, we can use this pediatric emergency tape. I will just need to lay him down. Now this says that he is about 18 kilograms or 40 pounds. Does that sound right? That's exactly what they just told me. That's a really great tool. It's useful for kids that can't easily hop on a scale, but it's not perfect. According to an analysis, only about half of all patients are estimated within 10% of their actual weight. But it's best for kids between 10 and 25 kilograms. It's most useful in critical situations. One side has all of the correct doses for our code drugs, intubation medications, and seizure drugs. And the other has all the equipment we might need, even things like Foley catheters. But we won't need anything like that for Junior here. I just wanted to get some pain medicine into him. Uh, Nurse Pomboy, can I get the most concentrated version of IV fentanyl? 50 micrograms per milliliter, please. And split it into two syringes. 
so I can put half on each side. What, a shot? No, I'm going to tilt your head back to 45 degrees and spray it in your nose like a squirt gun. See, I take the concentrated IV fentanyl solution and spray it into your nose. That's great. Is that just for kids? You could use it in, a, in adults, but the problem is that 0.2 to 0.3 milliliters is the ideal volume for the nose. The absolute maximum for either side is one milliliter, but that's really quite a bit to tolerate and absorb. So the amount of medication an adult needs really limits us a little. So how well is it gonna work in him and how long is it gonna take? Most kids feel better in about 10 minutes. It works as well as IV morphine. Can you fix a fracture with just this fentanyl? No, I am I mean, you could, but it would still hurt. I'm gonna give him some ketamine in just a minute, uh, but now that you're starting to feel more comfortable, we'll get an IV, verify his weight, and I can do a better exam. What if you can't get an IV on him? If we can't do an IV, I can give him five milligrams per kilogram of ketamine intramuscular. Can you give the ketamine in his nose? You could, but it's controversial how well it actually works. Some of the studies suggested nine milligram per kilogram of ketamine intranasally, but that's really a lot of ketamine to give into your child's nose. It works pretty well for pain relief in kids at a dose of one milligram per kilogram, but we'll need a little bit more for procedural sedation. In fact, there is a recent study in JAMA Peds using 1.5 milligram per kilogram nasally in kids for extremity injury pain relief, and it was non-inferior to fentanyl, although had a few minor side effects. All right, I got the IV. Is he too little for ketamine? No, actually, we give it down to three months of age safely. What if he wakes up while you guys are doing the procedure? I'll give him a second dose of 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram. Is there a chance that he could stop breathing? Respiratory depression is very rare. Usually it happens when we push it too fast, and in those cases it happens within the first two to three minutes. So I'll be right here if he needs me, and I'll push it over 30 to 60 seconds just to avoid that. Do we normally give on Dancitron with that? Some do, some don't. The number needed to treat to prevent vomiting in one study was nine, no difference in another. But vomiting is fairly common, uh, I would say in about one in every nine cases. So I usually give a dose of 0.15 milligram per kilogram of indoncitron. So I definitely like to give it before I am sedations. And what about midazolam for emergence reactions? I usually do that when I do ketamine sedations in adults where emergence reactions are fairly common. At a dose of 0.03 milligram per kilogram, the number needed to treat to prevent emergence reactions in one study was six. On the other hand, emergence reactions only complicate about 1.4% of pediatric sedations. And in kids, they have shown no difference in emergence reactions when midazolam was given prophylactically. So I don't for kids. Hmm, plenty of courage, I see. The ability to work across multiple specialties. There's talent and the thirst to prove yourself. Better be emergency medicine.